Today I'm going to share with you some recent experience um, and probably for the first time in a long time, there's very, very little about building information modeling and it's all about data, which is the theme of the conference this evening. From where I sit, I think there are a lot of big challenges that we have to face. Um, and the biggest one is, do you speak data? Uh, I live in Asia. Um, I live in a community where we have many, many different nationalities, many, many different languages. Um, but the one language none of us seem to have is data literacy. So I'm going to show you some of the experience we've had and some of the challenges we're facing. I'd like to find out if we're on the right track, if we're ahead of the posse, behind the posse, what's happening in general. And I hope throughout the evening we get a sense from the questions where we stand. So Gamuda Construction is a very large civil engineering contractor based in Malaysia. We have a vision for our business around data, which is to be a data driven business. What that means essentially is that the top level management are defining specific goals for data driven business. So they're investing in things like ERP systems and they're trying to drive us towards a more dynamic, more agile business. That means for the individual project managers or middle management that they're going to have to start relying on real time site data driven reporting and dashboards. Uh, currently, most of our staff are reliant on Excel spreadsheets, Word documents, PDFs, and the information is very often two to three weeks out of date by the time they review it. Moving down to the engineers on site who are doing the day to day work, they're going to be tasked with defining the deliverables for measuring uh, ways to improve their productivity using data. Um, and they're going to have to figure out how to collect accurate data that's reliable. And they're going to have to make sure it's standardized and controlled. So there's a lot of systems that we put in place to make sure this works. And ultimately, we have to make sure across the company that all the staff are provided with the correct data literacy skills. And that's going to require some substantial training and education, which I'll come to. So that's our vision. Um, and obviously that's driven by a, a belief in some benefits. Um, from a digital perspective, we want to improve the adoption rates of technology across the group. So we believe that by having this data-driven approach, it will actually lead to better extraction of value from the, from the digital processes. We hope that through the process, we can identify more site processes that we can innovate and improve and transform. So a lot of work's going into our robotics and our precasting and our offsite manufacturing. But to be able to do that effectively, we need this data to be collected. And we also intend for this to be a better way of defining success metrics for these digital innovation projects. So a lot of the work we've done in the past has been very difficult to prove if we've saved time or if we've added value. So we're hoping that this data collection improves that measure metrics. Uh, obviously, this is a, a win strategy for winning new work. So being a agile mobile company helps us to win more projects. And ultimately, we want to make sure that we improve our project margins. So this is all about reducing risks, improve, improving certainty, and leads to the bottom line. The challenge is that we have to change the culture of the group. The current culture is very project focused. People are tasked with delivering projects within certain timeframes, and they don't share information beyond the, the framework of their projects. So to get this to work, we need to change the culture from my project to our data. So where did Gamuda start in our journey with data? So we looked to the market to see what tools are available to turn our construction sites into paperless construction sites. And we started using a tool called FieldView. And FieldView is a digital, digital form system. Um, it allows all of our site staff, the operators, the managers to use digital forms on site, on mobile devices and on PCs. Um, it allows all of our partners to get involved through digital inspections. So subcontractors, consultants, resident engineers, the supply chain. So we're mobilizing more and more people into the system. So it's not just our own teams. We're using it for checklists, for forms, for quality control, for record defects, for site progress. And we're also using it to capture photos with location data. So being able to see visual information is equally as important as being able to capture uh, numeric information. All of this is done through integrated mobile applications. And all of it is sitting on an inf infrastructure of fast, reliable, and most importantly, secure cloud-based data and web services. So we have a team of people that are working on site with the operations teams to make sure the systems are working well. And we have um, IT teams working on the security of the back end. So let me show you a couple of examples of what we're doing. This is a, a, a view from one of the forms. These are quite straightforward forms. There's no, there's no rocket science in forms. They're effectively a digital version of a traditional paper form. The system allows us to capture photographs. You can hear, see some photographs from the tunneling environment that we have, some photographs from our building works projects. But essentially, we're collecting as many photographs as we see necessary. Now, to give you a sense of scale, on some of the construction sites, we're creating as many as 300 forms every week. Um, and that accumulates to nearly 15,000 forms in a project. That's a huge amount of information or a huge amount of data. So we set out originally to create a digital process to do the forms. 
but we didn't realize how valuable or how much data we would actually capture. So this is led us down the path of doing even more exploration is if we're capturing all this information digitally, apart from this very simplistic dashboard that comes in the software in FieldView, what else can we do with this information? So the software with FieldView can give you views of how many forms have been collected by which department. It can give you that information of how many forms have been closed out and you can see that accumulatively. But that's all you get. You, you would have to start doing a lot more work to get some insights. So the team realized that they were collecting all the data and they wanted to understand how to get insights from that data. So once you've got the data collected, it does actually give you more opportunity for new reporting and analysis. So we looked again to find out what we could do. And we were introduced to a company in the UK called Semper Analytics, who are very familiar with FieldView. And Semper Analytics helps us to develop workflows and processes and technology to link the data from FieldView into an Azure server, which we could then link to other data sets. And then from Azure, we took the information into IBM Cognos, and we've been using Cognos to create intelligent, dynamic dashboards for doing data analytics and data reporting. Now, through that process, we realized that we were lacking in some serious skills. And those skills include things like software and programming skills. You just don't simply plug in one application to the other and expect them to work. So there's quite a lot of, of programming required to get this to work. You need to have some very serious subject matter experts looking at the data. And one of the things that we discovered was you can create whatever dashboard you like, but if you don't know what the question is that is being asked of you by the senior manager in terms of what they're actually trying to understand about the project, it's very difficult to actually visualize and communicate the data. So half the problem is getting people to explain what they want to see in a report and for them to understand what's possible. And then you need to develop the staff's data visualization skills. We all know how to use Excel and create a bar chart, but when you start using tools like IBM Cognos, you need to have a lot more skills around actually being able to present the data and to be able to create dashboards that are intuitive to use and generate value. And then on top of all that, you need the layer of web services and IT security skills. We live in an era where there are cons consistent and constant attacks on our systems, and we need to make sure that they're secure and they're safe. So I'm just gonna show you some examples of some of the dashboards that we're creating through this process to give you some sense of what we can do. So this is accumulation of different data sets coming in from FieldView, and it's showing you some um, safety and health reporting. So we can start to see particular areas of concern. So these are by date for certain locations, and the blue and yellow bars are by location. And I'm not gonna delve into the specific data, but I'm just gonna show you some of these dashboards so you can see what we can do. So we can make the data very visual, but each one of these charts can be drilled into by simply clicking on a graph or driving into it. We can also make this a more visual report. So instead of looking at bar charts and graphs, you can take this type of safety report where on the left-hand side on the column are all the different safety reports, safety inspections, safety checks. And across the top are all the individual site locations that we're managing. And by setting up a set of criteria in the analysis models, you can quickly identify where there are critical issues in particular sites. So here you can see one particular red, dark red color box, which indicates that there's an actual critical issue going on. So this dashboard is made available to the safety directors and safety managers, and they can look at this dashboard at any time. And it enables them to see holistically what's going on across multiple projects at, at a real time. And these are the kind of dashboards that we're trying to develop across the business. So we've figured out how to collect the data. We've figured out how to create silos of information. So if it's a safety inspection, we can do safety reports. If it's a progress inspection, we can do progress reports. How do we start to tie these things across different disciplines? How do we tie progress to commercial? So what we've done is we've decided to do a more in-depth pilot study and investigate how we can plan and monitor the site works using some of these data systems. And this is something that we have not done yet. This is something we're planning to do as, as we speak. We're gonna set up a dedicated, digitally capable team with planners, commercial staff, site engineers, and overall project director. And they'll be tasked to establish standard operating procedures for data driven reporting on their project. The team will need to define their own timelines, the cost items or KPIs for reporting their daily activities, their monthly activities, and generating real time dashboards. Their senior project managers will need to be able to demand daily reports and be, uh, based on collecting site data. And in order to do all this, the team's gonna to have to learn how to develop these tools, test them, improve them, make sure they're reliable, and then make sure they can be deployed on a building project. And then this fully digital team will be BIM enabled or BIM, uh, BIM based. All the information that will be generated will be on a, a CDE, and in this case, viewpoint for projects. So we have got a plan, um, and I'm gonna show you one of the workflows that we've planned. 
So our intention is to take this kind of logic. So you have a very, very detailed, very accurate model of what has to be constructed. Um, and this is what we can consider to be a construction level model. Um, you also have the equivalent in terms of a program. So you've got a very detailed work breakdown structure in terms of the schedule of activities. And then you combine those two sets of data to create all the site tasks. And then once those site tasks are created, then you can start to use the digital forms on site to get real-time reporting and real-time monitoring. So the staff on site will know what tasks are going on. They'll know what activity to report on. And then using the data analytics, we can start to create the dashboards that we need to monitor the projects. So one example would be to take a traditional form with dates and start to use some data analytics to identify which ones are behind schedule, which ones are on schedule, which ones haven't started. If you don't want to use dates, you can use progression. So you can use color codes for progression. So you can see what works are in progress and how far they've got. But the challenge that we've got is our staff don't have these data skills. They don't have this data literacy. And we know that data literacy is a critical. We know the training, the education, and the skills development are all needed across all levels of our business. So we see data as a second language for construction going forward. We want to make sure that we educate the staff on the importance of this data, that everyone knows how the data is collected, how it's analyzed, and how it's used for reporting. We need the staff to share their experience. A lot of people get on, solve a problem, and just keep on going. We need, we need people to share their experience and improve everyone's knowledge. And we need to make sure that this is a, a data skill set, our primary skill set that needs to be mastered is we've identified basically three strata across the business and three levels of training. So for our senior staff, for our managers, our C-suite staff, they need to be made aware of the importance of this data and the importance of data-driven reporting rather than traditional reporting. A lot of this is changing the culture from the old way of doing things to the new way of doing things. They need to understand what the business value is and they need to understand how this can be done properly and resourced properly. The middle management, the project managers, the senior engineers, they need to be trained and experienced and learn how to use data for coordination, interface, interface management, construction planning, and cost management, not a small undertaking. So the courses that they will have to go through will include training on the planning of the resources needed, managing what's coming out of the process, but we don't see that they need to actually be able to build the data dashboards. And then the technical staff, the site engineers, the guys on the ground, these are the people that will be developing their software skills be supported by the IT teams and information teams to make sure that they can actually build out these reports, they can make sure they can collect the data. And this is the challenge that we face, is do you speak data? Do you have the knowledge to speak data? If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the data team. So that's my presentation this evening and I look forward to some questions and I look forward to some discussion about where other people are at in terms of their data journey.